Welcome to the ResearchWorks podcast, live from the European Academy of Childhood Disability Conference 2024 in Bruges, Belgium. Join us for interviews with keynote speakers, world-renowned researchers and clinicians, and behind-the-scenes stories from one of the great paediatric conferences in the world. I am very excited to speak with all of you guys today, my new guest today, which is Anina Ritterband Rosenbaum from the Elas Foundation in Denmark. And I feel like I just skittled my way through all of those words. How did I go? Did I say anything all right? I think you did relatively well. (laughs) Relatively. (laughs) Yeah, because so it's Elsa's foundation. Elsa's. See, yeah, I I went that too quickly. But thank you for correcting me on that one. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I feel like we've had a good chat already. We talked about the fact that um, the Danes do have the queen from from Australia, but really she's not ours anymore. She's yours. She is ours now. She's (laughs) yours. Um, but I really love the fact that I get to speak with you today because when I saw what instructional course you guys were presenting today, I thought, well, we need to chat because at the end of the day, why we want to do a lot of the research, what we want to do is to put it into practice. Yeah. And this is all about what you are presenting. So the title of your instructional course is CP, Global Clinical Trials Network, Speeding Up Translation of New Knowledge into Treatment for Children with Cerebral Palsy. What's not to love about that? Right. right. Yeah. To give us a bit of an overview about what this instructional course is all about. Well, the instructional course is about explaining what the CP Global Clinical Trials Network is actually all about. Right. And here we have uh, brought together a lot of amazing researchers, uh, uh, people in statistics, uh, also people with living experience of cerebral palsy uh-huh. to actually work together to create this global network. Wow. And we want to use all of our strengths, yes, the different capacities to yep. uh, make faster discovery of successful interventions and actually to translate those successful interventions into regular clinical care. I love that. Everything you said there, there was just gold <laughs> because I would... I'm going to go back to an episode I spoke about with Professor Diane Damiano, and she said, the unfortunate thing about evidence is that it's not really accrued or developed in a logical way, in a systematic way. We all kind of come about it from our interests and we apply for grants and it's it's not a cohesive method of developing evidence. So this network is also about generating new knowledge. It is. And actually right. the our method is using adaptive trials to actually generate this information that we need. I love that. Because by using adaptive trials, we can actually uh, moderate the the different trials. We can add extra trials if we think it's necessary, because we can also uh, change statistical procedures during uh, actually ongoing trials in order to get successful results and then move on with those successful results. Yeah, the translation becomes very seamless at that point, doesn't it? Let's talk about the adaptive trials first, because I think increasingly they become more popular. Right. You know, we've done a lot of, uh, you know, the gold standard is always the RCT. Always like that. But I think this is an, a new way of, of designing uh, clinical interventions. I yeah. think it's very appropriate. I yep. think it, it has the power of, of uh, including not so many people as we need in in uh, RCTs, mm-hmm. but we can then um, exclude or include the new trials if it's relevant for the study. That's amazing. Now, can you, I know that it's quite, well, okay, I guess it's quite complex. I would love a diagram. I feel like an adaptive trial, whenever you explain it, you need a diagram. You can show the, the, the link of how it works. Give it a go. I know English is your second language, which I, I think you're just so good at English anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, but tell us, explain a little bit more about how an adaptive trial actually works and how they contrast with an RCT. So for the RCT, you start with uh, making um, a protocol of the trial. You start the intervention and then at the end of the intervention, you analyze the data and you get the results. Mm-hmm. For the adaptive trials, you make a protocol, you start the interventions and as you go along, you adapt the interventions according to the results. Yep. And after a certain time, you can then analyze the results because of whatever uh, intermediate uh, data comes out of the de- of the trials. Right. And then you can move on with the successful ones and then eliminate the non-successful yeah. ones. Yeah, so you can look for the fast responders and the right. slower responders to the intervention and right. follow that lead. Why is it that you need less... Um, less 
participants in the trial compared to like an RCT? I mean, RCT, we think about power, you need a certain number for it. Why is it different in an adaptive trial? Well, at a certain point, you also need uh, participants in yes. adaptive trials. <laughs> that's, yes. that's what we need. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we cannot really do the trials. Yeah. Um, but I think it's uh, made by uh, by using statistics. So, yes. so it's it's more uh, uh, easy to actually uh, use a lower amount of data sure. to come with. Uh, some results. Yeah, it's more dynamic in nature, it's more isn't dynamic. it? Yeah, yeah, which is fantastic. So how does how does it work to get involved into this this network that uh, you've all created? Well, I was in, <laughs> actually this uh, started a couple of years ago. I was uh, part of uh, the initiators of this uh, global clinical clinical trials network. Amazing. Iona Novak, Bernard Dan, mm-hmm. Jens Bo Nielsen. And uh, Michael Fahey, okay, four uh, magnificent people. Pretty big names. They <laughs> they uh, came together with uh-huh. this idea, and uh, I was uh, part of this group, and we kind of orchestrated uh, um, an initiate meeting in Copenhagen at the Elsa's Foundation. Ah, uh, yes. For about thirty five uh, people coming together with their different expertise, like people with lived experience, right? Uh, researchers, statistical people people skilled in network uh-huh. making. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we decided that this is important for the CP world yeah. and basically the whole world. Wow. So you pretty much created your own symphony before this conference. We actually did. <laughs> we just did not have that name yet. <laughs> the symphony sounds very good, doesn't right. it? <laughs> I'm like, oh, it makes sense for so many things. Right. So when it comes to um, clinical trials that are part of this, are they done across the world? Is that how you've coordinated a lot of this? So at this moment, we are at the stage of creating a solid foundation for our global network. Okay. It, cre- it uh, takes a lot of effort <laughs> and we need to fight the legal uh, rules of, uh, of the international of the yeah. GDPR and international sure. share data sharing yeah but this is all part of I mean the work for creating something solid yeah so if we put really effort into the initiation of this of this network yeah I think we will succeed yeah so this is where we are at the moment wow Fantastic. Yeah. It's such a logical step to take so that we can actually move forward in the area together. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's fantastic. So that's one part of this network. The next part of it is the intent is to help to, gen- uh, to, to translate this knowledge into practice. What are some of the things that you have in mind for that? Well, so at the point where we are, we are starting with a pilot study. The initial thought is uh, going into uh, dystonia, children with dystonia. That's the first part yes. as a pilot. And as soon as we have a way of working together on an international basis, we will uh, scale up for a worldwide uh, international network. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So does that mean that clinicians can like... I don't know, is it where they can receive some education? Is it how they can be up to date with the latest, you know, yes. knowledge? Yeah. Yep. So uh, people who share the same interest with vision and mission, which is uh, uh, to um, improve the life quality of people with cerebral palsy, mm. is basically encouraged to become member of this network. Right. And uh, during the instructional course, we will also provide some information about how to get to become a member. Yeah, great. Uh, Because then they will be able to share and to get the newest knowledge within this field, to take part of the different interventions and to share their skills with the rest of the network. Yes. Uh, Yes. I think it's important. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, And let's touch on a little bit now on on lived experience and the involvement of consumers because this is a really big part of what has been created here. Let's spend some time talking about that because it's it's so valuable. Yeah, Yeah. I definitely think that it's valuable to include consumer engagement Mm. in this process. And Mm. actually for this network, we have already from the very first point included uh, consumer engager, uh, people with lived experience of uh-huh. CP, uh-huh. because I think their points are also valid. Yeah. And perhaps they're not expertise in scientific work, but then yeah. they can bring in other uh, 
ideas of uh, social co socials or collaborations yes. or ideas yes. or what do they need. Yes. Um, so this is really important to engage them from the very early start. Look, I think that's so important. You know, it, we um, spoke to uh, Professor Paula Chagas just yesterday about adaptive motorized uh, cars. And she was talking about how involving consumers is the best thing because it was parents that came up with ideas right. of how to adapt it for the most economical way. And her advice was, if you want to find a partnership, ask the family first, because they'll have their own network. Right. And there's so much power in that, isn't there, for yeah. people to think differently, bringing their own skills. Yes. And it's really diverse. It is. Yeah. It is. And and I think it, it makes good sense, I mean, to mm. involve our consumers to be part of the decision making, to yeah. be part of the process of what will happen in the future. Yeah. I think that's important. In the day, it's their lives that we're, that this is going to impact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this sounds all very, very exciting. What will be your, what will be your hope from here? So you're, it sounds like everything is very foundational. It's about to get going. What are you hoping to see and, and what sort of timeframes are you hoping to see this in? So, <laughs> oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so this project, uh, the CP Global Clinical Trials Network, was funded by the CP Alliance in Australia mm -hmm. and the Elsass Foundation in Denmark. Mm -hmm. And we are funded for five years. Okay. And we just started 1st of January. So within those five years, the aim is to establish the network, make sure everything is up and running, and then... Hopefully, we'll have successful interventions, which will eventually reach the clinical care. Amazing. Amazing. All in five years, which is, I think, is exciting, ambitious. It is ambitious. But that's what you need. Right. Right? That's, that's how you're going to move We're the dial. We're pushing for that. You do need to. If you, if, you have, if you have too long, it'll take too long to get there. This makes you sort of <laughs> right. stay on edge to get it sorted. Well, I look forward to speaking to you in the future, to hear all about thank this. You, I think it's so important for everyone to know this is happening. Yes. This is why I was so keen to speak with you. So thank you for your time today. Well, thank brilliant. you so much for your interest. Oh, absolutely. Anything to do with knowledge translation, you've got me in. Uh, to all of our <laughs> listeners, I hope you, that got you excited as much as I was. Um, but please stay tuned for more episodes. We've got so much more to come, but I'll talk to you all again really soon. Thanks and bye. Bye.